What's up guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to tune a 6-7 power stroke with Easy Link. I'm also gonna show you how to install a shift on the fly switch to change between power levels. This truck's a 2017, but this process is gonna be the same from 2011 all the way up to 2019. So here I have the Easy Link Auto Agent and a switch. I got it from a company called The Diesel Dudes. I'll put a link down in the description to some different delete kits and tuners they offer for the 6.7 Power Stroke. Super great company though, and is the only company I recommend you order from. But if you are tuning your truck to delete it, make sure you first look up the local laws and stay in accordance with them. If this is illegal where you live, I don't recommend you do it. I make these videos for everywhere in the world to watch. In a lot of places, they don't care, but in some places, it's illegal. Anyways, first thing you want to do is get a battery charger, put it on the truck. 10 amps is good. Anywhere from like 5 to 15 amps is great. Take your EasyLink Auto Agent out of the box, and you're going to plug it into the OBD plug just like that. You're gonna to need to download the EasyLink Auto Agent app and create an account. Once that's completed, you're gonna to go to your phone's Wi-Fi and you're going to connect to the EasyLink Auto Agent via Wi-Fi. Now I'm gonna go into the app and I'm just gonna screen record it and then I'm just gonna do a voiceover afterwards. One thing I will say now though is that when you're tuning the truck, if you notice all the gauges and like the center console display go black, that's totally normal. Don't touch nothing. Don't try to hit the power button or the start button again. Don't do any of that. It's totally normal for everything to go black when you're tuning. So turn the key to run. Don't start it. Just put it to run. Then we're going to connect to that auto agent. All right. So open up the auto agent app. Make sure your key is on and you're connected to the Easy Links Wi-Fi. If that comes up, just hit retry. Once it connects to the truck, it should automatically say it's set up to link with the diesel text. Just click link. Then right here, just go continue. And then pick your tire size or the closest to your tire size. Then hit next. For where it says describe your vehicle, I just usually put diesel dues delete kit. Just like that. Hit done. And now you're going to see all of these tunes pop up on the bottom of the screen. These are all tunes that you can put on your vehicle. So click on the top left menu and then select vehicle and then select ECU profiles. Now that bottom tune there is your stock tune, but we want custom tunes because we're deleting this truck. So there's tons of different tunes you can pick from. I'm just kind of messing around looking at different tunes at this point. But what we're going to want to do is actually that top folder, the recommended tunes. That's what we want to click on. In the recommended tune folder, there's going to be single tunes and shift on the fly. We want the shift on the fly because we're installing the switch. And then these are the three different tunes you can pick from. The bottom one that says LBF, that stands for low boost fueling, and that one's just going to be a little bit more smoky than the rest. But I'm going to install this hiss tune, which means it's going to whistle at an idle. To install it, you're just going to want to click on the little download button on the right side, and then you can just hit install. You're going to hit proceed, and now uh, it's going to take you through a couple prompts. Turn ignition off, hit continue. Turn ignition back on, hit continue. And now it is going to program the truck. And this is probably going to take about 10 minutes or something like that. Don't turn the ignition off. Don't open and close doors. Just leave everything as is. Once the tune finishes, it's going to bring you to this screen and say, turn off the ignition. And then you can just hit continue. It'll tell you to turn the ignition back on, hit continue. And then it's going to say it was completed successfully. Let's go. You've just installed your ECM tune. So now I want to tune the transmission. So I'm just going back to this custom tune folder and then click the folder that says TCM tunes. These are all your different transmission tunes. So I decided on this top tune there, it says uh, raise line pressure and medium shift points. But I mean, if you want, you can uh, try different tunes out. That's totally fine. But I'm going to hit download and then you're just going to follow the prompts again. Hit proceed. It's going to say turn the key off, hit continue, turn the key back on, hit continue. You know, the same exact thing. And then this shouldn't take quite as long as the ECM. Usually the transmission tune goes faster than the ECM. But yeah, just let it do its thing and then uh, we'll be done. All right, 99%. Turn key off. Continue. Turn key on. Hit continue. Let's go. You just tuned your transmission. All right, so we just tuned the ECM and the TCM, the transmission. You can take the battery charger off and now we're just going to confirm the tune worked. So under the hood, unplug your EGR valve. There's also another plug right here. Just unplug this from your EGR system. You're also gonna have to unplug your throttle valve. So your throttle valve is right here. Here's the module for it. And the plug is right down there. That white one right there. I think it's orange on an earlier model power stroke. So if you are deleting the truck, 
you only have to remove the actual exhaust. You can leave the EGR on the engine if you're not doing the EGR delete, but you must unplug the EGR and that throttle valve that I just showed you. But anyways, with those unplugged, we're gonna start the truck, let it run for a minute, shut it off and do that two times and just make sure we get no engine lights and that way we know the tune works fine. All right. Make sure we got some throttle. We got no engine lights. So just let it run for a bit, shut it off, and then start it again and make sure no engine lights come on. And as long as that's all good, the tune is successful and you shouldn't have any problems deleting your truck. So now if you just installed a single tune, which basically just means it's one power level that the ECM is always gonna be on, then you're done. You have tuned your truck, congratulations. But we installed a shift on the fly tune, which means we can actually switch between like stock power all the way up to 230 with a switch. So I'm gonna show you how to install that switch now. But just super quick before the switch, if these videos help you out and you wanna show me a little bit extra support, you can go to darkirondiesel.com. I got some super cool merch there. I also have a Halloween drop for the month of October. That's a pretty cool leather face design. I do this stuff full time. So any purchase you guys make on the store directly affects me and helps me out. And I really appreciate everyone that shows their support. Anyways, let's install this switch. So grab your switch, and if your switch looks a little bit different than this, like the wires are a different color, that shouldn't matter. But basically, we have to splice those wires into this fuel, I don't know if, the, I think this is a fuel temperature sensor or something like that. This is what it looks like on a 2015 and newer 6.7 power stroke. If you have a 2011, it will look a little bit different. The 2011 to 14 is a two wire plug like that. And then the 2015 to 19 is a four wire plug like that. It's kind of like a triangle. But it's literally exactly the same no matter what model you have. Both versions have two green wires and those are the wires we're gonna splice into. So I got my switch here and what we need to do is we need to run these wires through the firewall into the engine bay. So under the dash, see this big power wire? I'm gonna try to go through there. I'm gonna try to pull this wire down. I'm not sure how yet, but we're gonna try to go through there. If you come to the truck and you look down there, that's where the wire comes in and you see that kind of, that nipple on the top. I'm gonna just cut that off and try to go through there. Here's that nipple. I just stuck my hand in there with a razor blade and I cut it off and that's what it looks like now. So then back in the cab here, this cable, mine's kind of like up in an awkward place. I need to try to pull this down. But if I do pull it down, you'll notice on top of it, there's kind of that circle. That circle lines up where that nipple we just cut off is. So I'm gonna try to like pull those cables down and then use this razor blade to just kind of make a little X or something in that circle. And then we're gonna try to fish the wires through there. Be very careful, you don't wanna cut any of those wires in the harness, so be very careful of that. Then what I did is I have a coat hanger here that I've unwound into a straight line. And I fed it in through the bottom. I pull this down, you can see right there, the coat hanger is going through that little hole in the firewall. If we come around to the engine, you can see that coat hanger comes through. Now we wanna grab these wires and we wanna tape them to the coat hanger nice and tight. And it's gonna look something like that. And now basically we're just gonna pull this cable through the firewall. Sometimes it's easier to have a friend down here kind of holding that wire out of the way and feeding this through while the person on the other side pulls it out of the engine. But just go easy on it, take your time, make sure it's all not getting caught on nothing and just uh, pull it through into the engine. And as you can see, we got the wires through so you can take your tape off of this end. So pull enough wire through that you can basically run it here along the coolant reservoir and over to that sensor. Then grab this loom that comes with the kit, start it at the end here and then you can just feed it on all the way and you'll just feed it on all the way till it hits the firewall. Should look something like this. Then try to find the best way to run it. I kind of came up underneath here and then uh, along the coolant tank and over to this plug. You can pop this yellow tab up like that. Once you have it popped up, you can press it and unplug it. So strip the ends of the wires. We're gonna put these little red things on. So you put this side on the wire and then you thread it in and you can give it a little tug and it should be nice and tight on there. Then try to pull this back a little bit just to expose some more wires on the plug. And the wires we're gonna be splicing into are the green wires. There's a green wire and then a green and white wire. And like I said, even if you have an earlier 6.7 power stroke, there should still be two green wires and that's what we're gonna splice into. And the polarity doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter which wire you hook to which green wire. So take this other end of the connector off and then put the wire through the slot. And then you're just gonna thread it on like you did before. That little spike right there is gonna puncture that green wire and that's how it's gonna make connection. I actually found it was easier to put these two things on the green wires first 
like so. And now I'm gonna thread these into those red plugs. And there you go, it should look like something like that. Now before we button it all up, I'm just gonna make sure that switch works. So if you come into the truck and you turn it to run, grab the switch and then press this little button on here and you see that green light turns on just like that. Make sure you have it all the way in the number one setting to the left. As you rotate this to the right, when you press it, that green light's gonna get dimmer. So I'm gonna just rotate it a couple clicks to the right, press it again. And yeah, it's dimmer. A couple more clicks. And yeah, now it's like not even, you can barely see it at all. So that's good, we know our switch is working. So back in the engine bay, this is gonna stay unplugged and I usually tape it up like that just to kind of keep it covered. Then what you wanna do is just zip tie this cable, have it nice and neat out of the way, and then you're done in the engine bay. Now we're gonna get this switch ready for install. First thing I like to do is cut this stupid little kind of nipple tit off. It's on the right side there. I just use some little side cutters and just kind of snip it off. Like that, you can see it's gone now. So now we're ready to mount this switch. I like to mount it right here. You can pick anywhere in the truck to mount it as long as you have room for this switch behind wherever you're mounting it to. So if you use a upholstery tool, you can just kind of pop this out. Pop out this side too. Should come out though. There we go. Then basically this switch is gonna mount right here. So you don't want it to be too close to this uh, clip. You wanna make sure that it's got enough room kind of right in the middle so that it has room from the steering column on this side and that it's not too close to that clip. And we're gonna drill a hole right in the center of there. You're gonna grab a 3 8 drill bit. And then we're gonna drill a hole in there. Something like that. Now you're gonna wanna run your switch up underneath the dash and out here, just like that. And then you're going to take this nut off again and we're just gonna pop it in that hole. Then put that washer and that nut on and tighten it up. You can see we got our switch installed. It does come with this sticker you can put underneath that nut if you want, but I think the stickers look tacky in my opinion. But now we're gonna put the knob on. The kit comes with a little Allen key, so loosen that set screw. Then you can slide your, your knob on and tighten it up. It's like that. If you find your switch is hard to rotate, just loosen that set screw and pull the switch back a little bit and retighten it. Sometimes it kind of rubs on the nut. Then you can pop this back up, clip it into place. Just kind of be careful with these wires as you do it. Make sure you run them in a good spot. And voila, nice clean switch install. Go underneath and zip tie these wires. Put them nice and neat out of the way where they're not gonna hit anything. And that is it. You have successfully tuned and installed the switch on your 6.7 Power Stroke. So I hope that video helped you guys out. Again, if you wanna show extra support, go to darkirondiesel.com. Check out the links in the description for the different delete kits from the Diesel Dudes. Check those out. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you on another video soon. I can't take no loss. I don't need no